want to thank SRTX for coming down today. Um, been on a heck of a drive. We appreciate them stopping in. Down here at Cleveland Power Performance is our 69 Charger Hellcat. We named uh, Reverence. This is a 69 Charger, full steel body. Um, all of our VIN matching locations are the same. So, front core support, fender tag, cow, hand drip edge are all 69 Charger. Other than that, this whole thing's been worked over from front to back. Um, ton of styling, ton of detail cues that go into this thing. Starting at the front, this lower splitter down here. Um, each piece of this is aluminum hand built. This grill we wanted to mimic our original 69 Charger grill. So this grill is literally piece by piece aluminum, taken apart, cut, framed, molded, welded. Did keep the original lights, we did put a little bit of smoke on them. This lower cover, this splitter, our 16 factory Hellcat that we basically bought brand new. We come apart in five different pieces and start working them out. Um, Grill's original 69. We did work it a little bit. We gave the gray just a little more of a splash and the black just a little more pop. These bumpers have been cut multiple times. French and tuck very tight in on the side. Um, to get this thing to come all the way through, we had to add a fender extension through here with the metal. All of this basically has been worked in here to get 2016 and 69 together. We still have our splitters down here, so we still have our factory oil cooler, heat exchanger, all that stuff in there. We ducked right in there just like the factory Hellcat would. We do come towards the brakes a little bit as well. Um, the hood is a nine piece hood. <laughs> Sorry, one part of the hood was in nine pieces. We fabricated it. Not nine piece hood now currently. That is a functional cold air system hood. We'll pop that in a sec. Um, as we're doing our styling cues, we had to make that hood that level to raise and clear the supercharger. But once we did that, these hood pockets over here looked kind of odd. They're very small. We deepened our hood pockets. Well, as we deepened our hood pockets, we didn't like our door pockets. So then the door pockets got worked. Once we did our door pockets, we kind of just basically started massaging every piece of this car. The only part of this car that is not 16 Hellcat are the door mirrors. Those are fourth gen Viper door mirrors. The reason more or less is we like them to be a little bit smaller, a little bit sleeker. We did sink those down to the door. But they also, the factory 16 Hellcats have the blind spot indicator in there. The blind spot indicator, when it lit up green, orange against green, we didn't love the way it looked. Door handles, factory 16, um, everything about it recognizes your key fob when you walk up, which of course they're not on me, but we'll open that. Um, black chrome work was all done by Ogden Chrome out of Utah. You don't see a ton of cars with black chrome, so we want to go black chrome on it. Um, the wheels are CCW, they're monoblock, 9.5s in the front, 20 by 12s in the back. Paint wise, it is a custom in house mix. It appears to be a candy coat color, but it is a base coat, clear coat. Um, basically, it looks like it's a candy color. It's definitely not, so you can touch it up, but um, that's an in house mix. It's a PBG mix. It's, uh, we named it Strangler Green. We we're just having some struggles picking out our color and getting the color to go down, so. Took us a lot of spray outs, we're real proud of that color. It's a one on one color, we have not given the code out yet, so this is currently the only color car in the world with that color. This appears to be a decal, but it's actually paint. We did leave a little lip on it, just to give it the vinyl appearance, but it's definitely paint. Spoiler, just a real subtle spoiler for all the metal work involved. Um, didn't want to go crazy on the spoiler, but wanted to make sure that uh, we gave the car a little bit of flavor. Um, Across the back, we're still running our factory backup camera. Our backup sensors are in here. All this metal work in here is all done. So basically, each little piece has been massaged. This lip here has been massaged to match the upper part. When you put this in, we ran our exhaust tips out through here. We did a Cook's full exhaust on this thing. Cook's full long tube headers, center pipe, back pipe. You put this thing all in, and this reverse layer is up about a, uh, another 3 eighths of an inch. Didn't love the way that looks. We literally dropped it down three eighths of an inch. Did all the metal work just to drop that. Every little piece of this car has to be perfect when you're doing something like this. So all those little extra details are big to us to go through and get. Um, these back bumpers also cut, tucked French. Really worked in tight down the side. Our headlights and taillights we're really proud of. Um, so when you put a 16 Hellcat and a 69 Charger together, the two of them don't exactly make sense. So when you tell, like, say, a 16, you know, you're going through all of your Chrysler systems, 16 Hellcat, you're going through the dash, you say, flip up your headlight doors, and the car's like, what do you mean flip my headlight doors? I don't got headlight doors. Well, you do. So basically, we had to 
black and bars take apart two factory HID headlights and two factory taillights. So in the trunk, there's a box and in the front, there's two control panels and each one is almost a step layer system. So the car still thinks it's firing going through as a 16 Hellcat, but it allows the headlight doors to open. So I could pop if you want, head up front. So we still have full HIDs going, but through our inside in here, Tail light wise, I might have to fire her up here, but she gets loud. Tail light wise, we did. Might just throw hazards out. So these are flashing. Yep. So it's all the factory. You're working LEDs into older stuff. Um, obviously, you can get newer factory lights or anything, but to get a 16 to function through. A 69 you have a lot of different systems going together this is currently just a 16 but also this old stuff this new stuff wiring wise it is a pain to get this all going interior wise interior we worked at a local shop on the road called anderson custom interiors they're out of columbia station um these are factory 16 hellcat seats that the headrests have been shaved down on the seats we didn't do a ton with they are definitely recovered they're more than giles leather Heated and cooled, all the inside options work. So heated, cooled, heated steering wheel, navigation, the whole nine yards, um, remote start. Everything on this works just like it would work in a 16 Hellcat. You could technically turn this into a dealership, pull it into a dealership and services a 16 Hellcat. Some of the interior challenges on this, something like this is- see look, the, the cage. The cage is tough. So we want to tuck our cage up tight through our headliner, but also we have clevis pins. So. If you want to do a full day at the track, put the bars in. You want to take them out, take them out. So the back hoop comes out, your door pins come out. We have custom holders in the trunk. I'll pop open here in a second show. Um, our door panels also have, if you're running the track and you don't want to basically, this comes in, doesn't hit this, but all this is made to quick disconnect. So that'll all pop off as well if you want to run full track day. How was it getting the dash to fit? The dash was tough. So overall, when you put these cars, the two big fitment issues everyone always asks is, what was your wheelbase? What was your dash? So wheelbase overall is off about a half inch. When you come across the back of the car, the 16 uh, Hellcat and the 69 Charger, 69 Charger is about 10 inches longer in the back than the 16 Hellcat would be. So we had to add 10 inches of unibodies. We did right about back in here. And also underneath this thing, we have a bunch of custom exhaust plates work. So all that was added underneath this car to get it to come out. Overall, if you've got these two cars down, you put them together side by side on a frame table, the 69 and 16, the 16 is about three and a half, four inches taller. So when you put this all together, the question is, do you chop the roof? Do you bubble the roof? We don't want to bubble the roof because that's going to be weird having, you know, all right, so do you chop the roof? Yeah, chopping a 69 charge roof is not the best. So we had to go into the column, basically figure out how to keep all this together. So we were down about three and a half, four inches, basically right through the top of the cowl through here. So once we've figured out all this, how I want to do it, you're basically still building from scratch. Bars can be popped in. So what's nice is going down the road, if you're not running them, they're not making noise. Um, that's when they disconnect. Under here is just really a factory hell kit. And then here's our taillight control panel. Um, this whole thing is lined out. We use that lizard line. Lizard coat. Um, so trunk wise, we still want to make sure we kept a trunk. Um, obviously a 69 Charger, you have a giant trunk. All of our hardware is still black chrome. Every part of this detail, you just didn't want to leave anything off in this car. Tail light rings are black chrome. Um, every part of the car is still the black chrome part. Um, every part of this car, minus the chrome work that was sent out to Utah and the recovering of the interior done down the road was all done in house. So all of our closeout panels were done in-house. A lot of people say, oh, why are the closeout panels? Make sure they look. Well, two different, two reasons for the closeout panels. One, we wanted to accentuate. This is basically the heartbeat of this motor. This whole thing was built because we do turnkey pallets. This is based off of a turnkey pallet. So we wanted to basically make the red heart, red match the gauges. Red and green normally doesn't go together. The black kind of separates the red. Um, quite frankly, I like the red against the green. I picked that, obviously. So 
didn't really care what people thought, but um, when you look over there too, and I'll get a light on that for you, we have a ghost SRT flame right across the top of that motor, just like the emblem would be. So as you see it come across, how it will, very subtle touches like that. But all of our red is like that, so. These are all black chrome? Everything's black chrome. The whole thing is black chrome. This hood is functional cold air, as we said. At one point, this hood was into nine pieces. Um, we definitely had to clear the supercharger, but when we were making a hood this in depth, we decided, well, psh, let's go for it. Let's make it functional cold air. Right in here with the 16 to 69 meet, you can't, you know, call the place and get hood shocks for a 69, plus this hood weighs a lot. So these are actually channeled into our 16 inner structure. Those are basically built right into that. You can see where the original fender tag is still mounted up in there. And that is literally just a channeled 16 inner fender that'll open and close and come through there. Um, How many hours do you think you have in it? Oh, 8,900 man hours, about a year and a half to build. Um, obviously, 8,900 man hours got stacks. We have multiple guys on their car at one time, but uh, that's about what came out. So, just under 9,000 hours in a year and a half.